Welcome to A Little Bit Radical, a business podcast from Standing on Giants. I'm Rob, your host. Join me as I meet people and organisations who are doing things differently, challenging the status quo and yes, might just be a little bit radical. If the internet was a country, it would be the sixth biggest consumer of energy on Earth. You, like many professionals, may be thinking about how to reduce the carbon footprint of your business. But have you thought about your company website? I'm joined today by Vanita Greenwood, co-founder of Whole Grain Digital, where she helps businesses design and build low-carbon websites. She's also the co-founder of WebsiteCarbon.com, a simple calculator to test the green credentials of any website on the internet. Vanita, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So we're going to start with a little bit radical you. We want to find out all about you. So if you are a little bit radical and you're on this podcast, so we know you are, what do you think in your early life set you up for that? Many things. (laughs) I think as a uh, young girl, I saw my father doing things quite radically. He was the first person in our family to move abroad. And he always encouraged me to do the things that I saw fit at that point in time, allowed me to make decisions that normally adults don't let children make. He shared finances with our family on Diwali, which used to be a bit like Christmas, which is a bit like Christmas, where I grew up, where I grew up. And I had access to information that adults share within themselves in the household. And I was very lucky to have that. And that sort of set me up to see things differently. And even if I didn't understand all of it, there was an option of learning about it and just seeing my father attempt to do things very differently, set up his own business, fail over and over again, and still go and adopt um, new technology in the sector he was in, which is civil engineering. It was it was heartbreaking, but at the same time, there was a realization that if you don't try something new, something different, in a different way, you can't have the competitive advantage. And I think that set me up to think differently to my colleagues, to my uh, competitors. And and I think that's what's changed the course of my life. So there seems to be actually a recurring theme on this podcast, Vanita, where at a young age, you've been exposed to change and kind of the consequences of of failure do you think that helped you with your professional resilience or your resilience full stop you know to see that you can fail but you can always pick yourself up again absolutely you don't have a choice in business you have to pick yourself up again and you have to keep going and somebody in my previous job that was now 16 17 years ago but in my previous job said to me that the two things you need in business to succeed is persistency and consistency. Being persistent doesn't mean annoying people and nagging somebody, but it's actually being persistent with yourself, saying, you've got to get up, keep going. And that has helped a lot in difficult times and easy times, even even not staying complacent. You know, you have to stay consistently good to be in business. And that has shaped how we've run our business quite a lot. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> of course, yeah. The other thing that I picked up on from hearing you talk about your early life and your uh, dad in particular is the, it feels like a sort of learning mindset was instilled in you as well, like he was sharing all this information with you, which was usually reserved for adults. So do you think that's given you, a, as you've gone forward in your life, a, a curiosity in that learning mindset? Yes, it has. Yeah, and understanding perspectives of adults really helped as a youngster. I I remember a point at which I didn't understand what he was sharing. And I had this argument with my father, which sounds so stupid now, but I had this argument with my father saying, if you earn X amount of money, why can't I go and buy balloons every day? You have a lot of money, but not taking into consideration how how much money he has to spend on utilities or rent or mortgage and so on. There were aspects of which that I was exposed to as a kid that most kids would just be completely oblivious and therefore have bigger arguments. And there was this opportunity to learn about 
how businesses are run and how to look after your clients. What does it mean to look after your clients? What does it mean to look after your team and how you have to put team first? That's something my father did quite a lot as well, where he put the team first above clients and then sort of the clients looked after, were looked after better because the team was happy. And that's something that I learned from him. And I, I feel like I'm talking about my father a lot, but going back to the childhood, my mum was a very big influence because she was a housewife, but she's a really intelligent lady and she encouraged my dad to stay radical. And she doesn't want me to be as radical as my dad wants me to be, but she's still very encouraging and having that sort of upbringing just is now as 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 40 something year old i can see how magical that is absolutely so the the kind of you've had some some exposure to risk taking uh, a kind of a curiosity and learning and then the and then the other crucial element which is the the support of people who love and care about you right so it sounds like that was a good combination to support you in your little bit radical life absolutely yes it is even today <laughs> Yes, exactly. You mentioned client relationships as well. And as a client of yours, we feel very well looked after. So you're definitely uh, living that value. Oh, thank you. So um, as an adult, you've alluded to this already. As an adult, do you think you've become more or less radical? And what's been behind that? Oh, definitely more radical. I have been able to practice being myself, living away from where you grew up, helps you shape a new identity and put yourself further where you want to go because there's less judgment from people around you who you grew up with. And that has been a positive factor for me. And then doing something extremely radical, going against the grain from a traditional Indian family who would have gone with an arranged marriage. I've married an Englishman on the other side of the world. It has helped me stay radical and marrying somebody radical has helped me also not feel strange when I'm radical. So yeah, we have a pretty radical life uh, together here. Paint a picture of your life. So your partner is Tom Greenwood, co-founder of Whole Grain Digital with you. Paint us a picture of of that relationship in, in life and business and how you're radical together. Tom and I are best friends and have been before we started the business, before we got married. So We really know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So it's easier to point out where things could be easier, things could be better, things could be done differently. And an honest conversation is a radical conversation. Not everybody's honest with each other. And when you when you are in business with your best friend, you can be honest because you know you're working towards the same goal. And there's less challenges in the in the sense of feeling that I can't be radical. For example, if I said, you know what, we need to go plant-based for our business. It's a big, big decision that we both would like to make. But the radical part of it is that we would bring the whole team in and do a vote. And then we had a vegetarian food policy for the last five or six years because we, we gave them an option. What do you think that we should be doing as a business? And they saw all of the options, heard us out, and we have a vegetarian food policy. So it, there's, a, there's things that we have in our personal life that we want to instill in the world, see those ripples become big waves. And through our business, we can make them big waves. Whereas if it's just Tom and me sort of, you know, charging off saying, this is what we want to do and without the buy-in, I think that wouldn't be fair, but it also won't be accepted and something that people will actually enjoy talking about so yeah there's a there's quite a few policies we brought into the business that come from our own belief system and luckily our team really is bought into it so yeah that that that's a personal thing but it also merges into our business well that's a good opportunity to start talking about the business then Take us back to, it's obviously a little bit radical thing to start a business full stop. The majority of people don't do that. The majority of people choose to work for someone else. So what led you to start the business in the first place? And then beyond that, how did you then make this further radical move to go from developing websites to developing low carbon websites? 
Oh, wow. That's a very long question. I'll start with what got us to start a business. Perhaps not as radical from, uh, from your point of view, but the reason we started a business together was because we wanted to work together and we wanted to live our own values rather than work for somebody else who have their own values and we're trying to align to them. So being able to work in an environment where you can bring your whole self was very important to us right from the beginning. That also meant that we were very poor at the beginning because we only would work with people who are doing something positive in the world. And we still do that to, to, to this date. And having that sort of ethical screening of who we will work with means you're putting your values first, not finance first, not profit first. And that then translates into all of the products you make. So creating websites, anyone can create a website. I know it sounds not so nice to say that, but yes, anybody can create a website. It might not be the highest quality website, but thinking everything through from first principles was the differentiating factor in how we think. Thinking about accessibility, thinking about sustainability, thinking about what will make the website load quicker, how to respect somebody else's time is what matters to us so somebody coming to a website that whole grains created you're sort of showing respect saying i respect your time we're going to give you the best user experience we're going to honor any disability you might have and make your website accessible so that you have a good experience the same applies for the time the website takes to load it, it's the amount of time that they have in hand and you want to give that information quickly and succinctly so it's a mutual respect thing that I see as a low carbon website. Not just it's good for the environment, but it's also good for people. It really helps people reach the information quickly and easily. And that's why our personal principles sort of translated into low carbon websites quite easily. And I think people really buy into respecting each other's time way more than saying, hey, we have a low carbon website. They go, yeah, and, and what's the benefit of it? <laughs> so there's that, So it's the benefits that people are buying into, not the, the, not the concept of low carbon website. That's really interesting. The next question I was going to ask you about was buy-in, actually. And so you find that the core kind of uh, values that people judge a website on, like this load speed and the user experience, are still the main selling point. And then the low carbon element is a kind of nice to have like the, the cherry on top is that fair to say absolutely and that's how it should be and the reason i say that's how it should be is because when you think of patagonia slogan i'm a big fan of patagonia they talk about we have the we create the best jacket in the world that is good for people and planet so if the jacket doesn't work it's not going to save you from the rain and wind so Predominantly, most importantly, you need to have a good jacket. But for the company, it's then an internal value to make sure it's created in such a way that's good for the people and planet. And that's the same thing applies for the website, that the website has to work for your customer first, and then they will be looking at the carbon emissions. And I understand because when it comes down to it, it is a tool for their business. So our values are something that we have to pay for, not the client. The client has to pay for the benefits that they're receiving. Absolutely. I love that. And I love that you're challenging the idea that to make a sustainable or an ethical choice, you should sacrifice something. And in that Patagonia example, that's that's a similar, a similar example as well, where the best, I think, sustainable companies are heading now is that there is no sacrifice to make in terms of your experience, but you, you can choose a fantastic product that is also good for people and planet. So what are you most proud of professionally, would you say, in the lifetime of your business? I'm proud of many things. I'm proud of an amazing team that we have cultivated together. And the nice thing is that we started the business, but the team is the one who runs it. We might look like the heads of the business, but when it comes down to it, it's the people who make the business happen. And we've been, we've been really picky at whom we work with, but that applies for clients and team. So when we bring somebody in into the business, 
they are very autonomous people who have their own ideas and have the have the right to execute their ideas within the business and that's why it's so important for us to bring the people in the business that actually have good ideas <laughs> and same thing applies for clients where we we've been we've been very um picky and choosy picky on whom we bring in and that's what makes it so special as a collaboration i think the main thing that i'm really proud of is the people in our business they make things happen and we have ideas together but they make those things happen make those ideas actually come true and website carbon was one of those things that we had an idea for we did all of the research for tom main predominantly did all of the research papers and so on for but implementing them was the team and now we have millions and millions of tests that have been carried out we are able to give solid data back to the industry and the fact that the industry has changed because of what we produced 5 6 years ago the industry is really adopting the green principles in their work which wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have pushed it 5 years ago and it was a part of our conversation with b lab when we were going through our b corp application b lab said there is no carbon emissions from the digital sector don't worry about it don't fill in that section and this was in 2017 2016 sorry and we were like that doesn't sit right this just doesn't sit right we need to find out what the carbon emissions of the internet are and we launched an internal project which is what is website carbon today and we launched our first website carbon uh, methodology in 2017 which was on our around our 10th birthday and our b corp certification and it was life changing because now we talk about it and people know about it it has taken 5 or 6 years for the industry to catch on but there's more and more people actually wanting to champion it so the the ability to create ripples in the industry takes a lot of work but we have that ability and we have that ability to do that over and over again like we did in 2009 we were the first people to talk about wordpress as the cms that should be used by large companies and we have since created websites for marks and spencers for sony for standing on giants of course and so many amazing companies of course. but that wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have gone and knocked on various agencies doors and said you should specialize in wordpress i do sometimes regret it because i sometimes feel like i just grew my competition but when it comes down to it if we wouldn't have grown the competition it wouldn't have become a common cms and somebody has to create those ripples and and my team creates those ripples that's why i'm so proud of them in both those examples you have done something which i think is a little bit radical which is ultimately you're just you're not just thinking about your own interests and your own business's interests in that one moment i suppose maybe i'd summarize it as long term thinking in the first instance you knew that in the long term adopting wordpress and powering you know powering wordpress's growth would come back to help you and yes it would help other people you were happy to grow the pond and equally with website carbon before anyone was really thinking about it i can't believe that b lab said there's no emissions from the digital industry that's quite incredible that shows how far the knowledge has come since but again you were doing something not just for yourself but for an industry and a practice as a whole that kind of idea often gets a lot of challenge within an organization you know the idea that we should be doing something that's not just for our own goals our own success what would you say to someone who wants to implement an idea like that on how to go about it if you really believe in something and if you really think that that is the right thing to do you got to just do it there will be people who follow you you don't need everybody to follow you you just need an e- enough momentum for your idea to become a wave of uh, the ripples is what you need to create for them to become waves so if there's a clear intent and it's a good intent people will see it so shying away from what you believe in will just means that you're not living your authentic life just going back to that b lab point in 2020 we changed the way b lab looks at digital carbon emissions because by then we had proven 
that digital carbon emissions matter. And now it is a part of the B-Lab assessment. But it only came about because we pushed for it. And that's another way of not taking, <laughs> not, not just saying, okay, that's your assessment. That's how things are, things are done. Actually challenging the status quo. If you believe in something, go back to that assessment, go back to that conversation and with proof. Uh, but not not in an aggressive way, but in a honest way, in your authentic way, so that people can see where you're coming from. And the more you do it, the more you become known for being credible and honest. And I think people really appreciate honesty in this day and age when everybody is sort of trying to get ahead. And if you're getting ahead with honesty and self-confidence in what you believe in, then people will sort of want to see what you're up to and, and follow you. And that's what's been different about the way we do things. I think people are very drawn to that kind of authenticity, as you say, that's for sure. So what do you think the future holds for you at Whole Grain? It's clear that you're constantly evolving as a company and as people in your partnership with Tom and the people in your organisation. There's lots of things that we're doing currently that we want to continue doing, like promoting low carbon internet, greening the internet, making people think about how they use um, products mindfully, digital products especially. But that also brings us to understanding why internet needs to become more human and domesticating internet is really important as more and more products are making us less of a community. I might sound very traditional and old-fashioned when I say I'm not very keen on meta coming along and saying you can meet digitally and not in person. I feel like that is that is sad. <laughs> it's just sad. Um, but going back to the principles that we want to push for are making internet a place where people feel safe, psychologically safe, privacy is first, how a person is feeling is taken into consideration when they come online, and therefore not bombarding them with messages and advertisements and taking away their options of where they, you know, giving them the choice of what they want to do today rather than thrusting ideas in their faces of, of what they should be doing when they come online. I feel like there is a case of making internet more human, making it more privacy focused and putting the control back into people's hands who are on the internet rather than the large companies that are pushing their own agenda. I'm not saying specific companies are bad. I'm just saying some of the principles they are, they are using to manipulate normal people are, are just terrible. And we really need to do something about making the internet more human, more humane, more um, feeling like you can be somewhere safe. For example, if you're sitting with a book in your living room, the book's not pushing advertisements at you. You're just reading the book for the joy of reading the book in your comfy chair. That's how you should feel on the internet, that no one's trying to send you anything, no one's trying to tell you, buy this, buy that. You've come to the internet to find a piece of information and it serves it to you, putting your needs first. And that's what I feel human internet would be in the future, rather than something that manipulates you to do something that you didn't come for and and i i don't know how that will come about but that's what we're currently discussing internally and working out how we should integrate within our principles of respect for our customers respect for our clients customers and it sort of ties into sustainability really well but it takes that one step further where somebody feels extremely looked after as if they were sitting in their private living room with a book how would that feel that's what we're trying to see how to bring that about in our clients' experience on their websites. I really like that as a metaphor that browsing or having an online experience should feel like you're in an armchair, cosy armchair with a fire, reading a good book or watching a movie or having a landline phone conversation with someone that you know no one's listening in on. That feeling, uh, I think, is missing from a lot of yeah. the internet. I think you're right. Your work is so entrenched, actually, with the outside world that I'd like to shift our perspective out from, from your business to the world now. And what's the 
main change, a little bit radical change, or maybe a lot radical change that you would like to see in the world at large? Oh, that's quite a dangerous question. Rob, you have touched on things you shouldn't ask. <laughs> I have very radical thoughts on what the world needs to do. And of course, there's nothing I can do individually. I, I need a bunch of people who are excited about my ideas and feel like they are their own ideas. One is living more plant-based and actually advocating for elimination of animal matter in food. And the biggest thing that we've done in our personal life that I feel is quite quite a massive deal is we don't fly for holidays. We comp we use a composting glue. Our main glue in the house is composting glue. And once you have a composting glue, your life changes in a way that you don't understand before you have one. You start seeing soil as something like a treasure. Creating your own soil makes you realize that you can't put rubbish in it. You can't throw bleach down. You can't throw chemicals down. That soil is going to grow your own food one day. So you become more aware of how hard it is to grow your own food even if you have the most nutritional mater nutritious material in your own garden. And then you realize how hard it is to grow food, then why would you feed it to animals? You want to feed it to humans. So you're sort of looking at the efficiency of the whole system and thinking, if you're going to feed someone, might as well feed the end, end, pro end person, which is a human, rather than feed it to an animal 10 times the amount of food and then hope that that animal provides some food to you in the future in, in case it doesn't get infected and die before that. I'm quite an advocate of plant-based living but also composting your poo and, and having a composting toilet in your house and really learning about soil and really learning about how you can grow your own food. It, it, it does magic, it really does. Uh, so there are there are multiple radical things we do in our life that may sound really not very digital, not very modern, but they're actually fundamentals of living that we've forgotten. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to bring people on that journey. I think if I was to do something else in life, I would advocate selling composting glues. <laughs> I don't know what I expected, Vanita. It wasn't that, but maybe it's not such a maybe it's not such a huge surprise. I so. <laughs> what a fantastic answer! But the way that you explained that was so beautiful about how that simple change, and it is people that know me will know that I'm a vegan and a and a, a passionate vegan advocate as well, without trying to be too preachy. But the way you connected those two things, I thought was really beautiful there about how, and ultimately both are the same thing, I think, okay. removing yourself from a system that we've inherited, that you don't necessarily question. You don't necessarily question the sewage system. It's something that's there. You don't necessarily uh, question the food system. You just know how food gets delivered to you. But actually, you've removed yourself from two there, and then you've been able to see them as part of one big, quoting the Lion King, circle of life. I think that's um, really quite profound. If you're looking for a crowdfunding investor for your compost loo business, uh, let's let's talk. So we've reached the end of our, our time here together, Benita. Thank you so much for your insights. You've been a fantastic guest. As a final parting thought, I always like to ask our guests, if there's someone listening to this podcast who's got a little bit of a radical idea, but they perhaps feel scared or they don't know what to do next with it, what would be the thing that you'd tell them as the first step they can take to start bringing that idea to life? Start somewhere. You just have to start from where you are. You don't have time. Life's too short. Just sounds cliche, but life's really too short. If you have a radical idea, the world needs it. The world needs all of the radical ideas that anybody can bring. If you are brave enough to talk about the radical idea, try doing it. Most people will appreciate it and you might change the world for better. So do it. Fantastic. Benita, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll speak again soon. 
Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it, please follow us on your podcast platform. If you'd like to appear on A Little Bit Radical or have an idea of someone we should speak to, please email podcast at standingongiants.com or get in touch with me on LinkedIn. You can search Rob Fawkes or search Standing on Giants and you'll find me there. Thank you very much and speak to you next time. Thank you.